Hello all, welcome to part 22 of the security tube Metasploit framework expert. <clears throat> In this video, we will look at using plugins. This video is part of the security tube Metasploit framework expert course and certification. If you would like to enroll, please visit securitytube.net slash SMFE. Our certifications are currently being taken by students from over 30 plus countries around the world. And this video is brought to you as part of Security Tube's vision mission to provide free yet quality infosec education to our community. Okay, so Metasploit is good at a lot of things, right? But of course, it can't be good at everything. And this is where there are a lot of third party tools which do a better job in specific tasks uh, in the world of exploitation than Metasploit. As an example, Nmap definitely uh, is probably the best port and service fingerprinting scanner out there, right? Uh, WMAP is good for web security and similarly Nessus is good for policy checking, compliance, etc. So is it possible to bring the goodness or the best of all these worlds to Metasploit. Yes, it is. And the way we do it is using plugins. So basically, what are plugins? The idea is to have external tools like Nmap, Wmap, Nessus, Nexpose, etc. But somehow integrate their functionality with Metasploit. What I mean by that is Metasploit will send inputs to these tools, the tools will do their task, and then the results can be imported and used once again in Metasploit. The advantage is that this allows us to actually use specific tools which may be very, very good at that specific task and still enjoy the power and flexibility of the framework as well as share the data collected, analyzed by those tools, which uh, from Metasploit perspective is a plugin and use it for other purposes as well. So let's look at how this works. So I'm already here. Let me create a new workspace uh, and probably just call it plugins, right? So now I'm in the context of plugins. Now to load a plugin, use the load command, hit tab twice, and you would see a list of plugins available. The one we are interested in is WMAP. Right, so let me load WMAP. And there it is, it says successfully loaded. And now when I hit a question mark, what you would notice if you scroll on top is that we have three shiny new commands from WMAP. One is run, sites, and targets. Now, before we move any further, let's try and understand how to use WMAP. So let's go to pen test, framework, exploits, framework, and inside that, let's go to documentation, right? You would notice a simple file called WMAP.txt which can easily get us up and running in a matter of seconds. So quick start guide is let's first crawl the website using the auxiliary scanner module, uh, which does HTTP crawling. So for that, we have our victim machine. Let's start mini share, which actually is a web interface or basically a web server, which allows you very simply to drag and drop and share files. So I go back here again and I do use. So here we go. Let's look at the options. One of the first things we need to figure out definitely is the R host which is 192.168.1.150, right? And URI path, let's start from the root URL. Port 80 seems fine as well. 
and uh, these are things which we could manipulate if required later on. Let's go ahead run the auxiliary module and if you notice uh, it was actually able to okay I think stupid me we don't have an IP address yet <laughs> There you go. Now let's go back here, run the auxiliary module again. And we see that we were able to fetch a couple of URLs. This one gave us an error, but we were able to fetch the root URL as well as the psftp.exe URL. Fantastic. Now let's go back and look at hosts. And what you would notice is automatically hosts has been populated and services has also been populated. Now what we're going to do is basically if you go back again to our little help file right we've loaded the WMAP plugin and now we can view the list of sites using hyphen L where this site should now be visible WMAP sites hyphen L and there we go, right? We have one site for which we already crawled three pages. Now we can actually use wmap.targets to set the target. How do we do that? To set the target, all we have to do is basically use the hyphen T option and then mention the specific URLs we are interested in, right? So let's say we are interested in this URL, which is the root URL. Now we can run the WMAP scanner but before we do that let's look at the enabled modules which are there. This will show us all the modules which will be used when we apply this test. Takes a bit and this should be applied again 1.150 should already tells us. So we have web server testing, file directory testing, unique query, blah, blah, blah. Now the application I'm using is actually not really vulnerable to a web app attack, though it's actually vulnerable to a memory corruption one. Anyway, just so that we can go ahead and run this, let's go ahead and run WMAP run with the hyphen E option. And this would go ahead and start the actual test. If you go back here, the application is still up and running. And we should see some interesting output in a matter of seconds. Right. So it was not able to get many of these files, etc host, D, blah, blah, blah because most of the stuff doesn't seem to be working. Now it's trying web service based attacks. However, most of the stuff is just not working. Now it will move on to directory based attacks. Right, so if you actually had a web application and a server which was vulnerable to one or more of these attacks, then you would actually even get vulnerabilities listed in the VULNS or VULNS table. This takes a bit. One of the very good reasons why I like to do demos which eventually uh, do not give you shell or do not give you a vulnerability is, is simply because uh, most people when they do things like Metasploit what they end up thinking is hey you know if we start Metasploit we have to have shell right or else you're doing something wrong not at all there would be actually more cases in the real world 
uh, where you would not be able to break in just by using the plain vanilla commands and all of that in Metasploit. In many cases, you may have to write your own exploits or probably weave in multiple attacks together to break into the system. In absolutely very rare cases, uh, would you be able to just launch a module and get root? Right? Anyway, so I'll probably kill this so that you know we get some time to look at some other stuff as well. So it's trying to figure some things out. Directory based attacks. I'm probably just hitting a control C so that we can finish all of this. Right. Now it's trying out other possibilities. And there you go. Right, so if it was vulnerable, we would have found some sort of a vulnerability which is there. Unfortunately, there is no vulnerability right now on the mini share server which we are attacking. And it seems to be all okay and well. Okay, so coming back to our slides. If you notice, this core functionality which we just talked about was all inside WMAP, but we were running it from within Metasploit and there was data sharing happening. Similarly, you can do the same with Nexpose, Nessus, Nmap, and a bunch of other tools, right? So plugins allow you to basically go ahead and extend the functionality of Metasploit and allows it to use third-party tools and software uh, which should enhance its functionality. I would recommend that you go ahead and try out uh, actually integrating Nexpose by first downloading and installing it and then Nessus. This would be part of your exercise as well. That's all for this video. If you're interested in taking the course and certification, please visit securitytube.net slash SMFE and uh, thank you very much for watching this video. Please leave your comments behind. Have a great day ahead.